Hi, hey everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to the first podcast of 2014, The Mole. We're going to define the mole. We are going to define Avogadro's number, relate molar mass to particles. We're going to calculate the mass of one mole of any substance, define molar... Well, we're not going to do that. Yeah, we are. Define the molar mass of a gas, explain sigma to SVP. It sounds like a lot, but it's not quite so bad. So let's hop right to it and see how these things are changing. All right. A mole is the unit is the SI unit for amount. That means the metric unit. Okay. So if I asked you what is a mole, you should say the metric unit for amount. Amount is basically the number of particles. And a particle is an atom. So look at the periodic table for that. Ions, anything with a charge. A molecules, which is a, which is a compound of two nonmetals. You remember that from before break? And formula units, which is a compound with a metal and a nonmetal. So let me give you my other a dozen. So this is another unit. Dozen is unit for amount, right? A dozen is twelve anything. A dozen cars, a dozen donuts, a dozen people. A mole is 6.02 times 10 on 23rd of anything. Now notice that's a big old number. So you could have a mole of donuts, a mole of eggs, or a mole of atoms. Now a mole of donuts would be huge, size of the earth. A mole of eggs would be huge, size of the earth. A mole of atoms is small because atoms are so small. So why is the number times 10 to the 23rd so big? Why is Riemann paper 500 and we don't use a dozen, right? I don't want to get a dozen sheets of paper when I buy it from Office Max. I want to get a ream of paper, which is 500. Why? Because paper is small. Or we use a lot of it. Um, why is a gross of bottle rockets 144, welcome to my Indiana life, and not a dozen? Because no one wants to shoot 12 bottle rockets. If you get bottle rockets, you want to shoot tons of them, and they're small. The smaller the thing you measure, the larger the bundle. Particles are small, 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 small. So why is this number so big? Because particles are so small. Good job writing that down. How many particles and what type are in one mole of water? Now water is H2O. That's two nonmetals. So there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Why molecules? Because it's two nonmetals. Hydrogen and oxygen are nonmetals. One mole of gold. 6.02 E23 atoms. Why atoms? Because gold is on the periodic table. It's just an atom. One mole of table salt. That's NaCl. All right. So it's going to be 6.02 E23 metal, non-metal, formula units. Oh yeah. One mole of sand. Um, sand. I don't know what sand. Actually, I do know what sand is. Sand is this. So that's two. It's a uh, silicon. Is I'm looking at my periodic table. Uh, silicon is on the non-metal side. So we will say that there are 6.02 E23. Um, we said non-metal, so we'll call those molecules. And one mole of carbon, 6.02 E23 atoms. Okay, so we can never count them because there's too many. Moles can be liters of gas, too. <laughs> any gas at STP is 22.4 liters in volume. Any gas, any gas, any gas. That's weird. Any gas has the same volume. Okay. STP, standard temperature and pressure. Zero degrees Celsius is standard temperature. Temperature. And pressure is 1 atm. If it's not at STP, it's not 22.4. We'll always be at STP. So 22.4 liters is the volume of any gas, 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 not solid, gas, gas, gas. So what's the volume of one mole of neon gas at STP? 22.4 liters. Of hydrogen gas, 22.4 liters. Really? It's got two of them on there. Yes, 22.4 liters. This is bigger than this, but what's the volume of it? 22.4 liters. A mole of carbon at STP, sucker, um, you can't tell. Why can't you tell? Because carbon is a solid. So you go, can't tell, try to trick me, sucker. Moles can be mass too. Mass is measured in grams. One mole of carbon, and we need our periodic table. Beep, beep, beep. One mole of carbon is 12.01. One mole of oxygen, 16.00, whoops, grams. One mole of carbonate, now carbonate is CO3 negative 2. So what I do is I look at carbon, and I have one carbon, and I have three oxygens. So 16 times 3 is 48. I hope you're okay with that. And that is 60.01 grams. 
Not too bad, right? What is percent? Next thing we're going to do. Percent is part over total. How many people in your class were naughty and didn't get presents from Santa? Well, there's 24 people in our class. We only have one Nathan. So 1 divided by 24. Calculator help. 1 divided by 24 times 100 is 1.66%. Uh oh, my calculator is dying. I hope this hitting on a whole bunch of times works. Percent is part of a total. Percent of a compound is molar mass over total mass. So again, we need our periodic tables. So nitrogen from the periodic table is 14. Oxygen, right, is 16 each. So this bottom part is going to be um, 16 plus 16 plus 14, which is 46, times 100. So 14 divided by 46 times 100 is 30.4%. Now, if you want to find the percent of oxygen, I would take 32, 16 plus 16, over 46 times 100. And 32 divided by 46 times 100 is 69.6%. I could have also subtracted that from 100. Um, just to remind you, this means I have two H's and two O's. So if I want to do just the percent barium, um, barium on the periodic table is 137.2, and then two oxygens are 32. Two hydrogens are 2.02. .02. So if I'm doing barium, it's 137.2, and then 137.2, 137.2, plus 32, plus 2.02, .02, is my batteries are low. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, i got to do the math in my head now. 137.2 plus 32 plus 2.02 .02 is 0.22. That's 11, 6, 7, 171.22. So 137.2 divided by 171.22 is times 100, 80.1 percent. Good. Another way to find percent composition is from experimental analysis. 95 gram sample decomposed into 40.6 grams of carbon and 54.4 grams of oxygen. Find the percent composition of the compound. So remember it's part over total so I want to do carbon. And the part that's carbon is 40.6 grams of carbon over 95 grams total times 100 percent. If I want to do the percentage of oxygen, remember it's just part over total. 54.4 over total, that's going to be grams of oxygen, total is still 95. Notice how the total is the same for both of them. Times 100, and let's hope my calculator has enough juice to get through this. 40.6 divided by 95 times 100 is 42.7 and 54.4 divided by 95 is 57.3%. Yay! Another example, student collects the following data. Mass of calcium, mass of calcium oxide. Now calcium oxide, ideally, you would know calcium's plus 2, oxygen's minus 2, so it's going to be CaO. What is the percent of each element in the compound? Now, if I have calcium oxide's the whole thing, that's my total, that's my part. So it's going to be 30, whoops, 30.02 grams of calcium over 42.28 grams total times 100%. So on 30.02 divided by 42.28 times 100 is 71.0%. So then the other one, an easy way to do it is 100 minus 71, because you know it's got to add up to 100, is 29 percent, this is calcium, this would be oxygen. Review. Always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. Little g means go to the periodic table, that's a unit. So whenever you see a little g, you're going to go to the periodic table to get that number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in a mole of anything. Formula unit is ionic, that's a metal and a nonmetal. Molecule is covalent, that's two nonmetals. An atom is an element. And 22.4 liters of one mole of gas only at STP, which is pretty specific, and I am specifically out of here.
Toodles.